welcome to The One Inside, an internal family systems podcast. I'm your host, Tammy Sollenberger. On today's podcast, I chat with Gabby Bernstein about IFS as a spiritual practice. Hey, everyone. I'm glad you're here. On today's podcast, I talk with New York Times bestselling author, speaker, and lover of IFS, Gabby Bernstein. I was thrilled when I found out about Gabby, who spoke about IFS in such a clear, understandable way. I just had to have her on the podcast, and I'm so thankful that she was open to do it and that she turned out to be such a warm, kind, and just lovely person. It is so amazing when we find people talking our same language outside of the IFS community, and that is exactly what I think about Gabby. She is using the same language. We are talking about the same thing. And so I'm super excited about what Gabby is going to bring to our community and what we can bring to Gabby's community. I highly recommend you check out her website, GabbyBernstein.com, which is full of free resources. On the episode, I mentioned her TED Talk and her Super Soul session with Oprah, um, which can be found on YouTube. I watched both of those and I listened to her Dear Gabby podcast. It's so good. I highly recommend you listen to all of the things. We also spoke about a meditation that I did. It's a parts meditation to help you get to know a part. And so if you're curious about that, it is on her Miracle Membership. You can join her Miracle Membership community on her face on Facebook or on uh, through her website. Definitely connect with Gabby. She is on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and so am I. I am IFS Tammy on Twitter, Instagram, and there's the One Inside community on Facebook. I am also IFS Tammy on Clubhouse and have been doing a few Clubhouse chats, so that's been super fun. Gabby ends our conversation with this description of IFS, which I absolutely loved. She said, this life-altering practice has the capacity to change you forever. Enjoy. So, Tammy, you are so awesome. I just love your podcast, and I found you because I just like searched IFS and podcasts and like first thing was you and I was so excited. So here we are. (laughs) And uh, I'm also, you know, been practicing IFS in therapy for seven, for eight years, but only learning it for my own, for myself and for my own teachings through work. Now um, I'm taking level one in September, in the fall. When are, which, which one are you taking? Do you um, remember? Like what, it's an East who's... Coast, it's an East Coast time in, um, starting in October, I think. Okay. Okay. Do you know mm-hmm. who the, who the trainers are? I'll email you after I'll get your email and I'll send it to you and I'll tell you exactly who I'm with. Yeah. Okay. Cause I apply, I'm like, oh my gosh, I applied to be, so the trainers, they have a, a, a lead trainer and assistant trainer, and then they have what's called a program assistant. Yeah. And so I applied to be a program assistant for a training and I think it starts in October. So does I'm it like, also have January dates? I don't know. I didn't look that far out. <laughs> I was like, when does it start? Okay. Yeah. I'm so I'm, excited. I'm excited for you. I'm so excited for you because it just takes it to another level. Like you've been doing this personal work, which is amazing. And I think the thing about you that I, I kind of wanted to talk about anyways, is that, so I listened to your Ted talk and I listened to you on uh, the super soul Sunday. And then I listened to all your podcasts yesterday. <laughs> I just couldn't get enough. And then my, then I got with my son, he came home from his field trip and I was like, I have to keep listening to her. (laughs) Like I just couldn't stop. Um, But one of the things that I found was amazing was the Ted talk was nine years ago and there was so much IFS language in it. I was like, you, you didn't even know I had no idea. It was just like, I don't know if that's like the course in miracles that just has that languaging in it or. Well, you know, we are here to really be unapologetic about how spiritual it is, IFS. So if you're a spiritual teacher, you're often going to be alluding to similarities in the IFS lexicon because 
it is a spiritual practice. I can say that freely. It's a little harder to go there in the, in the clinical space, but I'm here to say that loud and proud. And I love that about you. And I actually thought when you invited, it's one of the things I saw you invited the audience to pray. And I thought, wow, I wish I could be that unapologetic about spirituality. That was beautiful. You did it slowly, calmly. Let's pray together. Take a deep breath in, a deep breath out. And then you just started talking to the universe. And I was like, well, what you see on the stage when you see me is that's me and self. That's when I'm most connected to self is when I'm on stage, very public, very vulnerable, very authentic. You, you, but the funny thing is, is that's not always what you would get in your, my intimate relationships, right? So of course, that, yes. and I actually started writing about that in my latest book is this whole, this, this, the, the difference between who I am in that big public arena and versus who I would be in my most intimate relationships and the safety around all that. I love that. Okay. So I did want to talk about your new book, but what I would, what I would say about that in IFS language is sort of you're stepping into this creativity, your spiritual yourself, that's where you're stepping into that. And then in your intimate relationships, you've got more protective parts running the show, whether it's with your friends or with your husband or with your son mm. or, or family, you mm. know, your protectors are probably more up. My protectors. So what I came to understand through my, with my therapist, who's a parts, parts therapist as well, is, uh, that the reason I can be so untethered and free and self-led on stage versus in intimate relationships, and this is getting better every day, let me just say, so I'm going to say how this has been, is because on stage, I'm in control. Oh, okay. my stage, my stage, I have the microphone. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. You know, I'm running that show. So I'm, I'm, when I just got, I just got the word safety just came to mind, like control for you means safety. I don't know if that's true or not, but that's just what's hundred percent control is how I stayed safe. Yeah. Controlling everything is how I stayed safe. That's not my definition of safety today, thankfully. Yeah. I am really uh, getting those controller parts out of their extreme roles majorly with, they have such a beautiful purpose. Those controller parts allowed me to write nine books in 11 years. They've allowed me to, to serve a lot of souls. They've allowed me to uh, grow, grow a business. They've allowed me to, to be very productive. But they've also really gotten away for many years. They made me sick. Mm -hmm. You know, they they gave me gut issues. They gave me relationship issues. So it's it's it, with with friends and colleagues and whatever. And so they thank them. They've had a really nice role. I'm really using them to their highest potential now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. I love that. Well, because you right, if you're like, I've written nine books in 11 years, plus you got married, plus you had a kid and you know, there's no way, I don't know. I just feel like there's probably no way to do that without managers really striving. Like there has to be a lot of striving, I think, in order to produce 100, that. 100%. My, my whole life, the, it's really only in the past year that I've truly started living. And I'm 41. Mm. And that's, that's okay because it needed the 41 years of devotional personal growth work and spiritual practice to get to this level of freedom that I live today. Mm. So I wouldn't change a thing. I have what does it you know, another, feel like? God, I'm sorry. What does freedom feel like? Well, yeah. What, what has happened in the past year that, yeah, I, I guess I'm curious about that shift for you. Well, many of your listeners might not know my story. So I have a background of addictions. I've been sober for 16 years and I got sober at 25. And in my early sobriety, I started teaching spirituality and then really developing my own, my own core belief systems and teaching them. And also obviously trained and, and studying other, other spiritual principles. Then I at 36, remembered being uh, abused as a child. The mem I had a dissociated memory. So that child part came in and I was for a while living in that child, mm -hmm. like living in the exiled part. It was very strange. I'm sure you've heard this a thousand times over. 
but it was so, so terrifying mm. to feel all those emotions and that to, vulnerability. To, yeah. It was really hard period of the hardest period of my life. I also wrote one of my most important books during that period, which is my book, the universe has your back. I wrote that the book is about transforming fear to faith. And it was like, Oh boy, you know, I need this now more than ever. Mm. And then since the, since I was 36, it's been four or five, six years, almost seven years. I've been undoing, undoing, undoing the, and unburdening, let's just say here. Yeah. Through IFS, through spiritual principles, through, through other therapeutic practices like SE, EMDR, beautiful trauma healing practices. And then three years ago, I had a, I had a child two and a half years ago and a year and a half ago, I, a little bit, almost two years ago, I got postpartum depression and what the PPD gave me was an experience of those child parts so blown out because they were so unsafe. Because I was having a biochemical condition. I was also like here now caring for this newborn, running my business. All of the control that kept me safe was no longer there then the child parts were no longer able to be managed. Mm -hmm. Plus you add on the biochemical effects of this and the hormonal effects of this and shit hit the fan, Tammy. So what did I do? I, I eventually got medicated after, after five months of living in hell. Mm. And that and I remember the day that I took the medication, my therapist said to me, my psychiatrist said to me, this will allow you to do the deeper work that you've been too unsafe to do. Wow. So that's why in the past year I've been really living because I've had this new baseline of safety that PTSD and an, anxi an un unresolved anxiety disorder that I lived with my whole life that I never had diagnosed could be settled through the, through the support of the meds. Then I could go so fiercely into my recovery. I could go and touch into those exiles safely. I could bring them out of the closet, literally the closet, right? Mm -hmm. I could, I could hold the little girl at night when she is having insomnia mm -hmm. and remind her she's safe. I could visualize myself holding her the same way I hold my son. Mm -hmm. And so in the past year, I've had the most transformational experience, IFS experiences mm. of witnessing physically, like literally going into a part f fearlessly, like stepping into the exiled part and letting her speak up. Yeah. Like embodying, I'm guessing that like embodying that. Mm -hmm. And I'm not doing a PSA for meds, but what I would say for me is that I was living with so much PTSD and unresolved anxiety and just managing the shit out of it and managing it with my spiritual practice, mind you, yeah. which, which we, which you talk about and Dick talks about that. You know, my managers were using spirituality as a way of not feeling those exiled parts. Yeah. And so like spiritual bypassing really. Yeah. And the, the, as a result of really just getting to that safer baseline with the support of the meds and the EMDR and the SE and literally, I mean, three therapy sessions a week. So I'm not going to say, oh, you can take meds and you're free. No freaking way. <laughs> right. But it helped me get my, get out of that parasympathetic hypervigilance. And in that new baseline, I started to just feel safer and safer and safer to go deeper and deeper. And now I can just be so compassionate towards those parts and the manager's have much less, I have much less need for them to be so present in that way. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And what, what's been the outcome? Cause you've still written a book, like you've still produced. So what's been the outcome of your, it's so cool that you said that in the, in the book, I actually wrote, I think it might have been in the IFS chapter of the book, which I'd love to send you to read. Um, I, I'd love to read it. I would love your feedback because I'm sending it to the publisher next week, but I would love to, because, you know, I'm just, I am new to this as a, as a, as a messenger of the message. I'm a student of it for, I've been student of IFS for eight years now, 
in my student, in, I mean, I've practiced in my own therapeutic sessions and then I'm doing level one, like we talked about, and I'm in the inner circle and I'm like soaking it all up and I'm like, just obsessed. Be, but I, I would like your feedback because it, it's my first time pretty much coming out with my experience of IFS. So in that chapter, I believe it was, I wrote something along the lines of getting to your new baseline. Doesn't mean that you lose your edge. It just means that your edges soften. I love it. So I haven't lost the edge. I still am a producer by heart because the, the other part of that producer part is a super inspired person. And so yeah. when that producer is no longer in her extreme role of trying to stay safe and control every detail, and she starts to let her team help her, and she starts to trust that the universe is guiding her more, and she starts to invest in more people to support the, pr the plan and let go of the rope, and she is really inspired. She wants to create so much. Mm. Which I feel like is what you've been saying, right? Like that's what you, the hands, like letting, taking the hands off the wheel, which by the way, I said, why <laughs> I was listening to you while I was driving yesterday, I literally took my hands off the wheel. And then you said, if you're driving and I was like, oh, right. <laughs> but I think that's what you're saying, right? Is if, if those, those manager parts are, they're not striving as much and I can take the hands off the wheel and then I can actually be more in that flow. And if I'm asking people to help, like, like I could, I can be and do this inspired work, but it's going to come from this, a different place. It's just going to come from, it's going to come from self. Maybe it's going to come from self. I have had the privilege this past year of writing a book in full self. And, and truly there's place there's, there have been times in my life, even when the managers were so strong and loud that self was so present. Self was always present when I was writing. Self was always leading when I was on stage. Those were actually the two, the two main places. Otherwise I was just in a full-blown manager, just extreme, extreme place. But, but there were, but there, but I knew what it was like yeah. to be a channel for spirit, for inspiration, for love. I knew what it was like to be in that adult resource place. I knew what it was like to be in what IFS calls self. Yeah. Well, um, I have a friend named um, Elisa, who is a therapist and is a student of A Course in Miracles. And she says that they talk about self, like a capital S self, mm -hmm. and then like mm -hmm. a smaller S self mm -hmm. would be more like the parts. Mm -hmm. Is that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And in the course to simplify, it would be that Ego is parts, right? Is, 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 well, ego is, is, ex, is extreme exiles and, and managers and things that, that, that are uh, still in their extreme roles. And self is love. Self is love. Mm, okay. Mm, I love that. I love that. Um, so, I, I know I always start with this, but we just jumped in. So I want everyone to know where you are in the world. And mm -hmm. if you were to look out a nearest window, what would you see? So I am in the country two hours outside of New York City, and I would see blue skies and trees, but really blue skies. I'm on the third floor of my house. So all I see is blue skies, really. That's yeah. beautiful. So your next book, the one that you've been writing over the past year while your son's napping, is it about this past year and this healing experience that you've had? It's about my trauma recovery. And it took me seven years to write it, right? From, from remembering to now. Mm. I, was ne I was not even close to being safe enough to write it until now. Mm. I started writing it at the beginning of quarantine and I finished it and finishing it today. Pretty much <laughs> finishing after it. I look at it, I'll have finishing to take the edits. Well, I'll send it to the publisher, <laughs> then I'll send it to you and Dick, and I'll get everybody's everybody to co sign that it's that it's kosher. Um, I love it. but I, um, yeah, I, 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 this past year with that baseline of safety that I spoke about, I was able to do such deep therapy, like I said, three times a week, four times a week at times. And I, I know that's a big privilege to have the privilege to do that. And I took advantage of it because I needed to get to safety so I could do the work I'm here to do in a bigger way, in a more uh, grounded way. Yeah. And more importantly, so I could be a happy fucking person, you know, yeah. you know, I just wanted to be a happy person. So I went big and I did 
I did tons of somatic experiencing. I did tons of EMDR. I did tons of IFS in my therapy and with myself. You know, I really yeah. just started just, I had my aha moment, my, my IFS aha moment where I was like, oh yeah, I can lead. Mm. I self can lead. Yeah. And that yeah. led me to just become obsessed with, with everything IFS. And now I'm going on to do the training and I I'm, hope to do all of the levels. You know, talking about you saying that about being a happy, happy person. I'm like, that's what you've invited us with the Dear Gabby po podcast. Like, that's what you're inviting us to do, listening to you and being with you in that, you know, like listening to your podcast, you, I feel like I'm with you and I'm, and I'm the callers. There was a caller and I wrote it down because I was like, oh my gosh, you're talking to me. Well, let me say this first. Sorry, I got ahead of myself, but. That's what the podcast is talking about, is talking about living in a way to be your happiest self. And so I feel like that's what you're inviting us all to do with your podcast. Yes, yes. It's it's about being unapologetic about your history and your stories, uh, normalizing trauma and suffering and anything that's up, really normalizing all of it, making sure that the listener never feels alone in their suffering offering solutions, guidance, but most importantly, holding people in their experience and seeing them fully in their experience. It's really rare that we can feel seen, that, that we can see ourselves. So that feels like my mission for that, sh for the show, Dear Gabby, is to help my listeners, not just the callers, but, but the listeners borrow the benefits of the callers because yeah. Yeah. they too feel seen in the other person's story. Definitely. Yeah. And that transitions to like what I got ahead of myself to say was you talking to this girl um, who was, I think she was the one that was from Jerusalem. I don't know if you remember this or not. Um, and she was talking about the doing and you said um, doing, so this was totally to me, doing and expecting are blocks to manifesting. And I wanted to know if you could talk a little bit about that because I started thinking about, okay, are they parts, like sort of my parts that need to do, 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 and then expecting, and are they blocks to, are those parts then blocks to myself and my self Yeah, energy? you just totally nailed it. So the doing is the manager part that's controlling and doing. The expecting is the, maybe the perfectionist or the part of you that, that thinks if it's not this way, it's not good enough. Those parts get in the way of allowing, which is letting self lead, letting love be the, the guide, letting yourself be receptive. Because really ultimately manifesting is about feeling good. And when you're in self, you're feeling good. When you're led by self, you're feeling good. I love that. I love it because I feel like it's the same languaging, right? It's like you're saying the same thing, which makes me feel like it's true, right? Yes. When we're saying the same things, it's like, okay, I can reframe it in IFS language. And then it makes me feel like, okay, this is a truth then. Yeah. You know, I listened to one of your podcasts. I can't remember his name, probably a big guy in IFS, but I can't remember his name was the podcast about spirituality in IFS. Seth. It was yeah, Seth's Seth. one. It, yeah. was, it was amazing. It was beautiful. I just listened. I was like, I literally was one of those podcasts where you're like, Oh my God. Yes. Like you're speaking back to the, to the, to the car, you know? Yes. Uh, and it's just, it's all so, so intertwined. There's, there's definitely differences as well. Like I think that, um, with regard to the type of spirituality that I'd been teaching forever, I wasn't really seeing ego, the fear parts of us as these multiples. I was seeing it as just, Oh, that's fear. That fear represents all those stories. Although I would always know that it was the stories and the experiences from our past that were, that were dictating the present, but I wasn't putting it into words from the standpoint that these were, uh, these were parts getting that completely just really, really locked it all in for me. Yeah, that's great. So tell me about the difference then, right? Recognizing that those, those fears and those stories are actually parts. Yes. Well, I think that, that fear is a driver in the manager parts, but it's not the only driver. There is shame, there's rage, there's, 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 all, there's all of the impermissible feelings that drive us to be protector, to be in our protectors. 
so to be able to see ourselves and others in all of these detailed different parts with all of their different storylines is such a beautiful full picture of the human condition. It's so much more, it's so much more compassionate. Yeah. Because now I lead a team of 20 people. Thankfully, I have leaders that lead on my behalf as well, but I, I am the leader that my name is on the door. My HR director and I are so devoted to following whatever Dick decides to do with self-led leadership to run our entire company from an IFS model. Wow. And right now I'm not trained to do that. I'm waiting, I'm waiting for the training to come out. Um, but, uh, and, but that's why a big part of why I'm doing the level one, I want to run it in my business. I want to run it in my home. I want to run, you know, I want IFS leadership and self-led leadership to be a, a common conversation in my world. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. but even now, as even though we're not, even though AJ, my HR director and I are not fully there yet, he's diving in, I'm diving in. So I'm, I, we're kind of playing around with it on our own, right? The two yeah. of us. And so even yesterday we were on a call and I said, and I could see with so much compassion, his 20 year old overachiever self. Mm. But then I could see his self pulling him out and then pulling him back in. And I, it was so fascinating to just witness. And when you can witness people in that dance of the in and out and the, and the, uh, just the, the, just the, just the pendulation of going in and out and in and out, it is a beautiful, it's almost as if you're looking at the person as an energy field because you see them in their, their strength. And then they go into that stagnant energy and then they kind of come back and then they go back and it's this beautiful dance. And, and the more awareness you have for yourself around IFS, the more compassion you can have for other people as you witness them in those, in those moments of, uh, multiplicity. <laughs> Wow. It's beautifully, beautifully said. Well, and if I could add to that, then, then I don't, not, this might not have happened in that context, but then I then don't uh, mirror his 20 year old with my own 20 year old. Oh, hell freaking <laughs> yes. It's exactly what happened with us in that moment. That was a beautiful, beautiful example. Now it's easy for me with him because, you know, he, he works with me. He's my, he, you know, he, he's not, he's not like overly triggering to me in any way, shape or form when it's your partner or it's your uh, parent, or it's, it's a yes. lot easier. It's a lot more difficult to stay steady in that self energy. <laughs> oh yeah. And yeah. it's brave. It's brave. Shit. You know, it's yeah. brave. It's brave to be able to, to even attempt to be there when you feel like your child parts are being attacked. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I have a part that says, why do I have to stay in myself when, when he doesn't you, have you know to what? stay thank in his? For, thank you so much, Tammy, for saying that because it's such, it's totally there. It's, I, it literally happened to me yesterday. I was like, well, why should I be the one that's so together and mature and, you know, taking care of everybody's parts, you know? Yes. A hundred percent. Yep. Yes. So speaking of that, what is your husband? So all I know about your husband is he's a lawyer. What does he think about this IFS thing and what's happened over the past year? Well, my husband's the CEO of our company. He also happens to be an attorney and a former banker. Um, he stays pretty, pretty far, far, far away from the public eye as much as possible. Um, occasionally you'll see a picture of his back on the internet and, um, <laughs> but he, but listen, he's a devotional, uh, student of, uh, a devotional, uh, man of personal growth. He's been in his own therapeutic practices, uh, f for, for many years. And he's been in the devotion of feeling good. And he has allowed me to, uh, to guide him in some ways, in some ways it's not my job because I'm his wife. Um, but the thing that's most beautiful at the moment is he's editing this book, this deep, heavy book that I've been writing. And it's, it's really hard for him because he's seeing parts of me that I never really shared before mm. that they were too exiled yeah. and to see me put them into this book. That's so public, just like when I would be on stage, you know, and then get off stage and be like, so closed up. It's hard, right? It's like, why am I seeing this for the first time? And it's like, well, listen, it's only because I'm safe enough to share it right now. 
Yeah. Yeah. And is that hard for him of that whole idea of you doing that in the public, but why aren't you doing that for me? Or this, this woman on the stage, like I like her and this woman at home, she's. <laughs> I write about that. There's a, there's a, a, a story in the book about how, you know, I'd see my husband just looking at me with like these beautiful, like wide eyes and just be so like lit up when I'm on stage. And then we get back to the hotel, wherever we were in the world. And it would be like this like manic, crazy controller. You know, I got to take a shower. I got to get back on my phone. I got to. And so, and I think these, him reading that stuff must be really painful, but, uh, but I keep reminding him like, we're doing like next level work on ourselves. You know, like we're going to be really, like, this is a good thing. It's so painful, but it's good, you know, to like go through these experiences and to read the book and like to even edit the book, like God bless the man, you know. How is having a child affected you, affected your relationships? My kid offered me the beautiful opportunity, like I said earlier, of blowing out some of those extreme roles because the postpartum depression just brought me to my knees because I had suicidal depression. I was on Mother's Day, the first Mother's Day, I said I wanted to kill myself. I, and I don't say that lightly, that's no small thing. Yeah. But until I was medicated. And once I got on a medicated path, I was much, much better. But that opportunity, I will say, to, to crack open, to hit bottom in that way was the first and first step of my deep dive transformational healing. And in that healing process, my son continues to be my greatest opportunity for practice because I did not experience, I also studied the Dan Siegel work. So I didn't experience the safety and the security and the soothing and being seen the way that I am now able to give my child parts. And then most, most importantly, most importantly, my child parts so that I can then give them to him. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's, it's really beautiful. Writing this book was all a lot about reparenting myself. And so I, I took a lot of the parenting methods that I was applying for Oliver and started to apply them in my own life, which is quite beautiful. My kid's it, cool. <laughs> my kid's cool though. He's, he's like, you know, when your baby was in the womb and you just kind of had a sense of who they were, even when they were in the womb, my word for him was he's so strong. He's so strong. And this child is so strong. He's just a strong, steady force. Mm, I love that. There's something about our kids that do just trigger parts of us that maybe I should say it for myself, right? There's parts of my son. I mean, from even the beginning story of, and I, and I noticed a little bit about you of like not being able to get pregnant and sort of this beginning story, right? It doesn't just start when they're born. It starts, it starts with when, the decision. Yeah. 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 And then the hard, the hard roads and, uh, you know, I went through a ton of infertility stuff. So it's sort of all this stuff really does bring out all of these parts and then they're here and then, right. It's they're They're almost sometimes our, our biggest trailhead because yeah, they can be our biggest trailhead. And I, I like what you're saying too, of like, um, you know, being able to parent the little ones in me and parenting them from self then helps me then to parent him. So I'm not parenting him from either what I wanted or what I needed and how I've had to, I have to do a redo with him. Mm -hmm. I've already done that redo inside so I can parent. I'm sort of rambling, but is this making sense? It's making a beautiful <laughs> sense. What you're saying is beautiful because look, bottom line, the more we personal growth that we apply in our own life, the better we will be as parents because the steadier we'll be, the more self-led we will be when, but also the more conscious we become, because if I become aware of all of my parts, I can see in my son that he needs to be seen in that moment or that he has this, he has all these parts, even that he's, you know, come into this world with that can be honored and nurtured. Yeah. So yeah, it's just, it's just fascinating to let them be that guide in that way. I love that. Yeah. And being able to see their parts, I think is so helpful to recognize their multiple. I want to talk a minute about your miracle membership. So the miracle membership, it's, um, the miracle membership is beautiful. It's, a monthly membership that offers 
students this practice of staying really consistent with their spirituality. So you you fall off your your personal growth practice first, and then you fall off your gym practice, and then you fall off your food practice. You know, so it's like I think spirituality is the thing to often go first. And so I'm like, I have that, no idea what you're talking about. Right, and once that goes, everything else falls apart. <laughs> yes, yes. So if you can keep that consistent, then everything else can stay steady. So the purpose of the miracle membership is to really give members this consistency. Uh, there's, there's like six years of archived content and we're working on actually delivering it up in different ways so that it, it can even serve them more. But every month they get a brand new workshop with me, brand new meditation, a brand new, uh, greatest hits. Like that's where I would share one of your meditations. And then they get all these archive, all of all the archives and they get, I do, I teach emotional freedom techniques. So we'll do a tapping meditation at the end of every month. And Oh, it's amazing. It's just so beautiful. And I do these different challenges, like a, a manifesting challenge, a meditation challenge, all that's included in the membership. So it's, it's just this beautiful gift that, that keeps on giving. And it sounds like it's an amazing community, which I think- It's a really cool community. And they gather on a Facebook page because frankly, there's no better way to do it at this stage because everybody's there. Yeah. So we're a private Facebook group. They love each other. And then when COVID's over, I'm sure I'll at some point do a live miracle membership event. At some point, that would be- baller. So cool. I love it. I love it. Um, okay. So how can people find out about that? The miracle membership? Uh, you can go to gabbybernstein.com slash miracle membership. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. And then do we have any idea when your new book's coming out? Two, 22, 22. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. But That's there right. are eight other books. So if people are new to Gabby, there are, <laughs> there are eight books. There is this amazing podcast called Dear Gabby. Her website is a full and packed with resources and information. Um, there's a YouTube channel. Definitely check that out. So there's awesome videos on the YouTube channel. Yeah. What else, what else do we need to tell people that are listening about you? Um, I would say, you know, if you're really new to me and you want to get to experience my teachings, obviously a book is a great way to start, but also dear Gabby, the podcast it's just launched. It's we're seven episodes in now when this comes out, it'll be like eight or nine or whatever, but it's, it's just such a, it's such a beautiful gift for me to be able to offer my work in that way. And it benefits me so much to be able to, to, to do that work. And I know that that is an expression of what's coming through in the audio. So I, I definitely encourage you to go to uh, any, wherever you get your app, wherever you get your podcast, just go listen to Dear Gabby, subscribe. Yeah. Be part right. Of it. Yeah. And follow Gabby on Instagram too. Lots of good free, like just connection. It's awesome. So Gabby, the last question I love to ask everybody is if, if you were not doing all you're doing, which I know you're doing a lot of stuff, what would you do instead? And you have to do something different. What would you do instead? I would be a stylist. <laughs> Yeah, you're kind of doing that already, right? Like with your photo shoot you did recently, you did, you styled yourself. So you would be a stylist, yes. Or I would be a publicist or a digital marketer. Mm. I mean, I guess I already am that. So I can't say that's that's still kind of what I do. I'm so loving, I love marketing and I'm so good at it. And so, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, that sounds great. Anything else you want to say? I just want to say thank you to you because I listened to very few podcasts. You are at the top of the list. I want you to keep doing what you're doing because you are teaching me in many ways. And, uh, I want to thank you for seeing IFS in me at you. I think you were watching one of my, my lives maybe. And you, you were like, so I saw the, um, oh, Russell, the Russell brand. brand. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, let's talk about IFS. And I was so excited about it. You explained it so well. I was like, who is this? This is mm. one of the best explanations of IFS I have heard. That's why. And I was like, that's really how I felt. And I was like, wait, who is this person? I need why, to know her. I, my, my mission is to translate and demystify. And it was always about spiritual principles. And with IFS, it's, 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 it's a specific language and the language can be very dense and it can be hard for someone that's not in the therapeutic space or someone who practices it themselves to fully understand. And so, uh, that's why I can't wait to share that, that chapter of the book with you, because I've done my part <laughs> to, uh, really just keep it simple, you know, just stick to exiles and, and protectors and self, and just keep it simple and, and just really introduce this, this life altering practice yeah. that has the capacity to change you forever.
Thanks for hanging out today. If you like this episode, make sure you subscribe. And if you really like this episode, share it with a friend and leave a review. You can follow me on Instagram at IFS Tammy and join our community on Facebook at the One Inside Podcast. Talk to you next time.